let's just get this out of the way now. This is not the best quality for value camera that you can buy. But for two to three hundred dollars, this is the best budget camera that I think you should buy. Yeah, we're starting this out with controversy. Let's get into it. So the 70D. This was released in about 2013. It has a 20 megapixel APS-C sensor, a Canon EF mount, and it can record 1080p, 30fps, 8-bit 420 video. Yeah, now, I know this doesn't sound like a game changer, and I know this camera wasn't a game changer when it came out, mostly, but it has two big reasons why I think this is better than any other camera for the price. The dual pixel autofocus and the Canon EF mount. Now, if you're making a short film, obviously this probably doesn't matter to you much at all. You'll probably be using a modded Helios to have a fake anamorphic look, and you're more than likely going to be more concerned about the quality rather than usability. If you're, let's say, a content creator, like half of the internet is now, and you want a camera that has decent quality and that is really easy to use, this is quite literally the perfect camera to buy. Let's talk about the body itself and usability. In terms of the body, you got a nice 1 million dot flippy screen. You've got a mini HDMI port, you've got a mic port, and a volumeter port, and then a little USB thing, I don't know. So for testing this camera, I decided not to just take it everywhere and use it as a camera. I decided to use it and pretend I was a YouTuber. I know, very weird idea. So I used it while I was getting ready to sell my car and also for just some other miscellaneous things people record themselves doing for internet fame. And the first thing I noticed about this camera is just how similar it is to my ADD. It looks, feels, it even smells extremely similar to the ADD. It also has the same Canon mid-range build quality the ADD has. It's not quite on the level of like the 5D or the 1DX, but it's not quite as bad as the T series either. Honestly, the main difference I could find was a slightly different button layout. And this camera doesn't do 1080p 60fps, which is a bummer. But for how cheap this is, I'm not too worried. And it does do 720p 60fps. Uh, the quality, it's... Uh... And it also has a solid touchscreen that is super easy to use in classic Canon menus that are, at least for me, extremely intuitive. And dual pixel autofocus is insanely useful for both photo and video. For photo specifically, if I was ever in a situation where the angles were a little bit tight, I could put the camera just wherever I needed it and then tap the screen and nine times out of 10, it would quickly focus and just take the photo. And the back screen has a high enough resolution and is bright enough even for daytime usage, which is fantastic, honestly, especially for the price of this thing. Did I mention it swivels? Because eat your heart out. Overall for photos, the 70D is insanely easy to use and quality wise, it can produce perfectly adequate images for pretty much anything you need it for. All right, so I know I started this off with photo stuff when video is like the main selling point of this camera, I know. But there is just way more to be said about the video portion of this camera than the photo portion. For video, the 1080p is, I think the word I would use would be efficient. It works. <laughs> yeah, it's not the prettiest and it doesn't have the best dynamic range or anything, but is it's very usable. And frankly, most people still don't have 4K screens. So I think that's really not that big of a problem. The 1080p, it's decently sharp. And in my opinion, it just looks a lot better than a standard phone video, especially once you throw a decent zoom or a prime lens on it. When getting cameras, the biggest thing really is going to be the glass that you put in front of your sensor. And the biggest thing I notice about the 70D while using it is it's a camera. Yeah, it's a camera. <laughs> It was so easy for me to quickly go through and switch settings on the touchscreen, adjust focus, or just move the screen itself so I could see what I'm doing in front of the camera. Yeah, I could get another camera like the A5000 or A5100, but it's just not going to be as easy to use. Hell, even my A7S isn't as easy to use as this because Canon just put so much effort into making this camera so usable. And it also has a microphone. It's a built-in microphone. It works. That's about it. There's a hair in this. Overall, usability is out of this world, especially for a camera that you can get for so cheap when so many other cheap cameras are missing so many important features. Video sharpness is decent. It's not quite 4K, but it's very usable. Low light capabilities, they're not amazing. For video, yeah, you're really not gonna be going over ISO 800, 1600, somewhere around there. There's no log profile. There's no 10-bit. There's no 422, 
or HDR capabilities of any kind. To be honest, in order to get those, you're going to be spending at least triple to four times the cost of this camera, and that's on the used market. And if you're starting out, all of those extra features won't make your video really any appreciably better. And if you're shooting in log without just knowing what you're doing, it'll probably make your footage end up looking worse at the end. Because Canon, I mean, they got like color engineers, I don't know. <laughs> Especially compared to Canon's notorious colors, which don't matter when you're shooting raw photos, obviously, and throwing some random Instagrammer's preset you paid $50 for on all your photos. But when you're using the standard video presets while shooting video, the colors are just, they're phenomenal. And I just like the images and video this camera produces, even if it's not the sharpest or the biggest pixels ever. <laughs> not to say this camera is without flaw though. It does miss some seriously important video features, such as uh, all of them. It has no peaking, it has no zebras, it has no form of any focus assist, false color, a headphone jack. Frankly, I'm surprised that I'm even suggesting this camera for video use. The reason I still consider this very usable, even without all those features, is, well, because at a budget, you're going to have compromises. The compromises on this camera, compared to, say, a Panasonic G7, is going to be lower resolution, less video features, and the fact that the EF mount is most likely going to be dead in the next 5 to 10 years. And if you like electronic viewfinders, well, this is a DSLR, so you've got a nice mirror which is great for battery and horrible for your sanity. Unless you're like me and prefer DSLRs, but whatever. Plus, no headphone jack, which is kind of a bummer. So you do miss out on all of those features, but if those are important to you, frankly this just isn't really the camera for you this is a camera for someone who just wants a camera that well i hate to say it but it works it also will probably hold its value pretty well since it's a canon so once your skills move past this camera you can easily move up to the next step for you and not worry about your camera's value plummeting whether that be the 90d which does aps-c 4k video i don't think it does 10 bit but whatever the eos r eos rp the eos whatever the new ones are, I don't keep track, or a Sony, Panasonic, you will have learned all the basics and you can just focus on creating rather than getting overwhelmed with the dozens of features a $2,000 camera will have. The settings on the 70D are just so simple. It's so intuitive. You can just, not knowing how to do a lot of it, quickly go through, set it up, and it'll just work compared to Sony's hellscape of menus that was the A7S II. And also, one other thing, most modern adapters for EF lenses actually work really well. I almost only use Canon EF glass on my A7S, and I don't have really many issues at all. And there is a bright side to the EF mount being on its way out. Cheap ass lenses. This Sigma 17 to 50 I got a few years ago, it has been beat to hell, and it is about $200 used on eBay, which is just spectacular. I even made a video about it. Like, I have beat this lens up so much, and it just works. There's also the Canon 50mm f1.4, which is pretty cheap. The 85 1.8, 70 to 200 f4 IS, 24 to 105 f4, 28 to 72.8, <laughs> and literally dozens of other amazing budget lenses that are just amazing. So you can get some great budget lenses that work perfectly with the autofocus system. And for most people, honestly, it's the glass that matters, not the sensor at the end of the day. Okay, I won't lie. This is not the camera for everyone. It's just not. But at this price range, you're going to have compromises either way. And for the 70D, your compromises are going to be basically video features for video features. You're getting the flippy touchscreen, you're getting dual pixel autofocus, and you're getting an APS-C size sensor. But you are gonna be missing out on a lot of core video features that many would consider essential, like peaking, zebras, headphone jack, Canon. If you're willing to put up with a lack of, frankly, a lot of important features, it is absolutely perfect. And if you wanna shoot a short film, just get a GH4.